Today I will talk about this small drone, which nowadays becomes as popular as the other ones like E88, E99 or similar drones. All these drones are from the same price range. They have similar bad image quality and bad video quality as well. Some of them say they have obstacle avoidance, but out of these three, for example, this one says it has obstacle avoidance but just doesn't work and I did a video about this in the past. This drone does have obstacle avoidance and I will show how it works. Why this drone is becoming popular? Because it has safe design. You see the blades of the propellers are protected and I will explain why it is important to have this kind of design rather than this kind of a design. Especially if you're a beginner it's important to have a safe drone. First of all, when you fly a drone, you can hurt people or you can hurt yourself. If you fly your drone inside of your house, it's important not to bump into the walls. And if these kind of drones bump into a wall, it will leave black marks on your walls and it may bounce from side to side and eventually can hit you and hurt you. Also, what happens when these drones bump into the walls? the blades of the propellers crack. For example here I have this blade that was hitting the wall or even the trees and you can see there are multiple cracks on it and you may not notice them. With time if you bump into more obstacles these small pieces may fly out, detach from the propeller and hit you as well and hurt you. These things are important to keep in mind and it's better to have protected propellers. You may have seen some protectors that can be attached to the arms of these drones, but are they not that effective? The most effective design is this one. I think this kind of drones eventually will replace these drones, especially if they have the same price. So what happens when you fly and you hit into your wall? If the drone flies into the wall, it will start hitting the wall and it will not be able to stay in the air. It will start inclining and falling down. At the same time the propellers will be rotating and damaging the blades of the propeller and eventually fall down. What happens if you have this kind of design? This drone, if you don't go too fast, will touch the wall and will be able to stay in the air. If you keep forcing this drone into the wall it also may eventually incline and fall down as well, but it will not leave any marks on the wall, it probably will not bounce around, it will just fall down and there is no way for the propeller blades to fly around. So there's less chances that you can get hurt by the drone. Let me demonstrate it in the real life. Okay, now I will fly the drone and try to hit the wall with this drone and will demonstrate what I meant by saying that it will not fall down. I'm trying to approach the wall, the obstacle avoidance is off and nothing is happening, like it's hitting the wall but it's not falling. For the beginners it's really important. And it's not falling, it's just hitting the wall. So it's very easy to control such a drone. And I can even touch it with my hand. You see how safe it is. I can play around with it like this. And it's pretty safe. So it is important to have this kind of design. So this is one of the most important advantages of this drone. All these drones come with similar batteries, mostly that range from 1200 to 1800 milliamperes per hour batteries. And if we look at this one, we can see that this is a 1800 milliampere per hour battery. It lasts around 10 minutes of flying time, same as any other cheap drone and same as those popular drones like E99, E88 and E58 in the past. 
In the past, actually, drones would come with 500 milliamperes per hour batteries and would fly only five to six minutes. And then they started adding better batteries. Of course, the limitation for small drones is that they cannot lift heavy batteries. The more capacity the battery has, the heavier it is, and small drones cannot lift heavy batteries. If we look at the remote control, it's very similar to the other popular drones. It actually has a nicer design, I would say. It has manual calibration buttons, which means that when the drone is in the air, you can calibrate the drone to move it a little bit if it's drifting to other sides. Let's say it drifts forward, you would use the backwards button to tune its position a little bit. If it drifts to the right, you would use left button to move the drone a little bit to the left so that you can stabilize the drone in the air. It has a speed button, it has three levels of speed, it has automatic takeoff and landing button, it has some tricks button, which means that it can rotate in the air, like it rolls in the air. The feature that other cheap drones may not have is the obstacle avoidance feature. When you press this button, this drone starts analyzing its surroundings. It has this kind of sensors here, here, and here. It doesn't have any sensor at the back, so the obstacle avoidance works only for three sides, right, left, and front side. At the back it doesn't, I will show you now. And this what also makes this drone different from the other ones. If it has the same price tag and has a really working obstacle avoidance feature, that's a good thing. The only problem with obstacle avoidance feature is that when you turn on obstacle avoidance mode, usually the drones start flying very slowly and you cannot really move them the way you would move it in a regular mode. So it becomes slow and you cannot maneuver with it a lot. So let's check the obstacle avoidance feature, but before that let's follow some steps to turn on the drone and calibrate it as you usually would do with other cheap drones. It's very similar. For example, the first rule would be usually to turn on the drone first. Then you turn on the remote control. When you see that the LEDs are blinking, it means that the remote control has not established any connection with the drone yet. And usually you would establish it by moving this stick up and down. And then when you see that the LEDs stop blinking, it means that the remote control has synchronized with the drone. Next rule usually is to calibrate the drone when it's on the ground, on the plane surface. Both sticks at the same time should be moved in diagonal this way. You see the beeping sound and the LEDs blinking, which means that we have calibrated the drone, or it's sometimes called factory reset. If you have purchased the drone, you have never flighted it before, do this. And before any use of the drone, the first thing you should do is calibrate it on the ground. The surface should be plain. If the surface is not plain, if you try to calibrate it with such an angle, it will be drifting a lot and even may not take off. There is inside a mechanism called gyroscope, which memorizes the position of the drone and thinks that this position is the right position and it will keep the drone in this position in the air. So if you put it under the angle, it will try to fly this way and it will drift or even will not take off. So the next step is to take off. You have two options, take off manually or take off automatically. If you're a beginner, I suggest to take off manually. Take off automatically would mean that you will have to push the take off button and it may fly quickly up and you may not have enough time to control it and it may start drifting and bumping around, hitting some obstacles around. We don't know if the calibration of the drone is correct. So I would do the manual take off meaning that I will turn on the motors first by moving the stick up and then by moving the stick up again will fly up.
stand to land you would use this stick again to land and keep it pressed until it shuts down the motors. When the drone is in the air you can still calibrate it as well using these buttons. If it's drifting a lot you would do that. But this drone has optical flow positioning which means that it has this kind of sensor here and it analyzes some kind of small images, pixels when the drone is moving and it doesn't let the drone drift too much. I've already tried this drone, I can say that it's not drifting too much but let me show you how you still can calibrate it manually in the air. But this calibration is not perfect because of the airflow these drones will always drift a little bit. If you want perfect calibration you need to have GPS in the drone. GPS positioning will keep the drone in the perfect position, will not let it drift. So now let me fly up and see if it's drifting too much or not. If I'm flying too close to the wall, it will drift because there's air hitting the wall, so it will drift. But as you can see, it's pretty stable in the air right now. But if it wouldn't, you would use these buttons to move the drone a little bit to the opposite direction to where it's moving. A little bit to the right if it drifts to the left, a little bit to the left if it drifts to the right. That, that's how it would work, but as you can see the optical flow is working fine now and many of the cheap drones now have it so you don't really need this functionality anymore. And finally uh, let's try the obstacle avoidance. You can hear that now my remote control is beeping already. It means that the battery is running low. I will take off and turn on the obstacle avoidance. I'm turning on the obstacle avoidance right now by pushing this button. And you see it is detecting the wall now. On the back no sensors. It doesn't go away from me, but on other three sides it works. So as you can see the obstacle avoidance worked on three sides, on the left, on the right and on the front side. You could see that when it was approaching the wall it would go back and it would beep. So obstacle avoidance on this drone works fine. The only downside is that you can't really fly quickly with this. In the obstacle avoidance mode the drone flies really slowly.